I started in my kitchen, something I wanted to learn at home. I thought it'd be fun to make beer myself. Uh, and uh, it just became a passion that got out of control. So this is how we got here. I'm Alex Laws, I'm the co-founder of Whiplash Beer and we're here at our brewery in Ballyfermis in Dublin. When we began, we started as a nomadic brewery, a gypsy brewery, a cuckoo brewery that we didn't have our own equipment. So we rented other people's equipment and produced beers. So we made each batch of beer in a different facility and with that process we were able to put away money to try start our own place later on. So we consider beer to be an art form and the desire was for our brand to also be that. Sophie Devere, she's a brilliant artist. So all of our labels and branding are focused around artwork, collage pieces, uh, and they're all linked to the name of the beer and the brief that's given for that. And most of our beers are named after songs that we like on Spotify. So we named one of our core beers, our IPA Bone Machine, after the Pixies. And they actually got a hold of it and sent us a message, which was incredible. Cans are better because they don't let in any oxygen, they don't let in any light. So that's really important to us um, and they're easily recyclable and all of these things. But the main thing is for the quality of the beer. This is our fifth iteration of uh, Fatal Deviation. It's named after a famous uh, martial arts movie from Ireland called uh, of the same name. Rollover at the moment is our fastest selling product. It's because it's one of our three core beers. So yeah, we sell a lot of it. It's great. It's perfect. I have a lot of kids, so 3.8% beers is good for that. You can have a few and not be worse for wear the next day. When I started working in beer service, uh, something I had a passion in and trying to understand what goes into making beer and it immediately just clicked with me and it was something that I knew I could learn forever so I just kept learning and yeah we just started making our own beers. So the history of Riplash, myself and Alex were working in an independent regional brewery in Ireland. Alex was a home brewer and decided to ask through a brewer who was working in the facility if he could come in and hang around and do some home brewing stuff and potter around and look at the equipment so we were always supportive of home brewers. Lots of the brewers we used to hire were home brewers. Our relationship began immediately. It was really, really, really good. He was the natural person to help us do this. I had a dream. I wanted to do, you know, more modern beers that hadn't been seen in Ireland at that stage. So the brew house that we have is the smallest craft brewery by volume in Ireland. And the only way we could afford to do it was to get a very small brew house and to brew lots of times per day. Most breweries in Ireland, craft breweries that I check in with, brew maybe twice a week. We brew here 25 times a week to, to keep up with it, even half of their volume. So it's a lot of, lot of labor, it's a labor of love, and that's how we could afford to do it with the, with the small investment that we have. For the last few years, our investments have to be very wisely chosen. So we've ch chosen to invest in kit and really qualified, brilliant brewers. Once we started here, we had three months of operation and then the pandemic happened, so it was, crisis point from the very beginning, but we've survived that and we're, we're still going. Consumers responded, they loved what we did, and they rated us our, their, their number one brewery in Ireland year after year, and we didn't even have a facility, so we just said, look, we're, we're gonna have to do this full time now, so we built the facility and now we're here. We've won Best New Brewery in the UK with a couple of online retailers. We recently won Best International Brewery. Porter, we just produced for Beer 52, won Best Dark Beer of the Year. We've won quite a few, but again, we don't take them too seriously. Uh, it's not something we use to advertise with. Our average working day is we begin at seven in the morning, we start straight away, and our last brew goes through at 11 o'clock every night. Our pale ales and IPAs tend to be kind of 16 to 20 days, so we mash in, so we take every brew length, we take roughly 200 kilos of grain, we put it through our mash filter, we essentially extract sugary water. So it fills within here, comes along this system, the mash will fill up throughout this, it will form the cake in here, this is compressed, we wash the sugar off with, uh, with hot water, and then that will travel into, uh, into the kettle. Other facilities, maybe an hour for this process, maybe more. But yeah, for us, about 10 minutes. That then gets pitched with yeast, uh, and the yeast will work away. So it'll ferment the beer out and eat away the sugar and replace it with carbon dioxide and alcohol. The last 10 years has seen like a massive amount of independent brewery set up, uh, which is great. Every town used to have a local brewery. I don't see why it couldn't happen again. What we want to do is to maybe not grow too much, to take care of our staff, to build a nicer facility here and to just build, build around us, just continue to improve. We don't have grand volume aspirations. We just want to do what we're doing right now and just do it better.